Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and welcome to a brand new video for how to apply color to a skin on frame boat. Now, even if you've watched a previous version of this video, I would recommend that you watch this one as well because I'm constantly learning new things and constantly updating my processes and I just like to keep people up to date with the most current possible information because there's nothing more disappointing than getting to the end of a beautiful skin boat build only to have things go sideways and end up with a coating or a coloring disaster. So anyways, this is gonna be a dual purpose video for my YouTube channel and also for my canoe building course and my kayak building course, just so I don't have to film the same content three times. And we're gonna be talking about the two main methods that I use to apply color to the nylon and two-part polyurethane skinning system that we use here at Cape Falcon Kayak. Now, I'm not saying this is the only way that you can apply color to a skin boat. These are just the methods that work well for me with my particular skinning system. We're gonna be talking about acid dye and we're gonna be talking about rare earth pigments. And there are significant advantages and disadvantages to both of these systems. So what I'm gonna do here is just go through the basics of how each system is applied. I'm gonna give you some general technical notes and then hopefully by the end of this video, you can make an informed judgment on what is gonna work well given your particular situation. All right, so getting into this here, the first system that I use for coloring a skin boat is acid dye. And how this works is we mix up the powdered dye with a solution of boiling water and boiling vinegar, and then we paint it onto the cloth with a foam brush very quickly. We wipe off all the excess, and then after that dries, we cover that with the two-part polyurethane. And the advantage to the acid dye system is that the colors are really rich and vibrant. There's a huge variety of colors to choose from. And as long as you apply it correctly, you can get really nice, even predictable results. And so at first, it seems like acid dye would be the obvious choice. But unfortunately, Acid dye is not as UV stable as rare earth pigment, and also the coating itself tends to yellow over time. And when you combine the yellowing of the coating on top of the color with the fading of the color underneath, the acid dye starts to look worse and worse the longer that it ages, especially if it's exposed to a lot of direct sunlight. Now, with acid dye colors in the warmer end of the spectrum, like the golds and the light oranges, this really isn't a big deal because the natural yellowing of the coating is complemented by the color underneath it. But when you get into the darker colors, like the reds and the greens and possibly the blues or the browns, you really start to see that effect of the yellowing and it just starts to fade and not look very good after a few years in the sun. Now, this is not always a bad thing. If you're interested in building a replica of a traditional Greenland kayak and you really want it to look like an ancient Greenland kayak, you can actually cover it with really dark brown dye and then leave it out in the sun deliberately for a couple years. And as the sun starts to ravage that coating, it'll start to give it kind of a mottled seal skin appearance. And so even though usually the fading of the darker colors with the acid dye is a downside, sometimes it can be a feature and not a bug. Now, another potential issue with the acid dye is that it's not compatible with every type of cloth. And so if you're skinning with polyester, you can't use acid dye period, also, if you're skinning with a very tightly woven nylon cloth, the acid dye can actually create issues with the polyurethane sticking to the cloth. And specifically, I'm thinking of the 700 Primo cloth that's sold by Corey Friedman at skinboats.org. In my experience, if you use acid dye on that particular cloth, even though the coating will stick just fine initially, after a couple years, you're gonna start to get delamination issues with the coating. So if you're going with polyester, or you're going with a tightly woven nylon, you don't wanna use acid dye with those particular cloths. Now, one final issue from the acid dye, which isn't gonna be an issue for everyone, is that if your boat is gonna be filled with water very frequently, it can slowly start to wash out from the inside. Now, I don't wanna give you the impression here that if you go for a pool rolling session in your new acid dyed boat and you do a wet exit, suddenly the pool is gonna fill with color. It's nothing like that. It's a very slow process. But if you're someone that does a ton of surf kayaking or you're a professional instructor that's doing a lot of rescue training or you're gonna be at a pool rolling session every other week and your boat's gonna be filled with water, over a couple years, you're gonna see significant fading of the acid dye from the color washing out from the inside. 
So you can see that acid dye is a really attractive choice at first because of the vibrant colors and the ease of application and the broad range of colors. But if you're gonna be going towards the darker end of the spectrum or if your boat's gonna be getting a lot of sunlight, you could be disappointed with the acid dye over time, especially in those darker colors. Now, just a couple special notes about acid dye. You really wanna stay away from any reds. It's okay to put a little bit of red mixed in with the golden colors or in with the brown colors, but I have never seen a straight red colored acid dye boat that doesn't turn pink or orange. So if you want red, you can do it, get that with the rare earth pigment system that we're gonna be talking about in a second. You also wanna stay away from black because there is a chemistry issue between the black acid dye and the two-part polyurethane that will cause the polyurethane to foam like crazy and it will peel off like a snakeskin. So no black with the acid dye. And finally, even though it doesn't create a functional issue, you want to avoid blue because blue combined with the two-part polyurethane that we use that yellows over time is going to rapidly turn into a pukey green color. Now, there is a way that you can get a blue colored boat though. You just have to use a different type of coating system. The coating system we use is referred to as an aromatic polyurethane, meaning that it slowly turns yellow, but aliphatic polyurethanes are UV stable and they don't turn yellow over time, which means that if you use a bright blue acid dye and you cover it with an aliphatic polyurethane like Coalan, you can keep that vibrant blue color for longer. The only downside is that aliphatic polyurethanes are a lot more expensive and they are a lot more toxic. All right, so that's acid dye. Now let's get into rare earth pigment. All right, so moving on to rare earth pigment, the way that this coloring system works is we mix the pigment directly into the two-part polyurethane and then we paint the color on with the coating. Now, personally, I don't have as much experience with rare earth pigment as I do with acid dye, simply because the older coating application method we used didn't result in perfectly even coating thickness. And anytime you've got the color suspended in the coating and the coating thickness isn't even, you end up with a streaky splotchy boat, which just doesn't work for me. So that's why I was always attracted to acid dyes. But more recently in the last four or five years, we've switched the method that we use to apply the coating from scraper cards to using rollers, which results in a much more even coating thickness, which now opens the door to being able to use these rare earth pigments, which is a good thing because as you're about to see, there are some significant advantages to going with this type of a system. So starting out with the downsides here, I would say the main disadvantage of rare earth pigment is that the colors tend to be duller and less saturated. There's less overall colors to choose from. And if you don't apply this stuff correctly, you can end up with some pretty unpredictable results. Although quite honestly, you could say the same thing about the acid dye as well. Now, the advantages to going with rare earth pigment is that unlike acid dye, even though this stuff doesn't look as good initially, it actually starts to look better over time. And so in some ways, it's almost the opposite. If you take a boat, you color it with acid dye, it's gonna look rich and vibrant initially, but as the sun starts to work on it over the years, it's gonna look duller and duller, especially in those darker colors. Now, by contrast, a boat covered with rare earth pigment might not look as good initially, but as the sun starts to chew on that coating, it's gonna get deeper and more rich and more saturated, and it's actually gonna start looking better over time. Now, other advantages are that it can't wash out from the inside the way that you can get with acid dye, and also it is compatible with all types of cloth. So if you wanna use polyester, or you wanna use a tightly woven nylon, or if you wanna go with some type of a natural cloth and coat it with the two-part polyurethane, you can do all of that with the rare earth system. Now, another good thing about rare earth is that you have color options available to you that just don't work in acid dye. And specifically what I'm talking about here is black and red, because like I already mentioned, there's a chemistry issue between the black dye and the two-part polyurethane. And even though you can get a nice saturated red with acid dye, it's always gonna turn orange pretty quickly just because of the yellowing of the coating superimposed over that color. And so if you wanna go with a deep red or a deep black, rare earth pigment will do that, although there are some things you need to be thinking about. 
The first one is that as you get into the higher dilutions of the rare earth pigment, it gets more and more challenging to get a really nice even color because the color is suspended in the coating. And if you're not just perfect on your application method, you can see spots that are a little bit lighter and a little bit darker. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like in real life, this Greenland kayak here is covered with a medium dilution mixture of black and brown. And it looks really nice from about 10 feet away. And these wider areas here, which are easier to roll and easier to smooth, actually do have pretty even color. But if we come in close on the cockpit here where you've got some of these more complex surfaces that are harder to smooth out, you can see how everywhere that you've got an edge, it's pretty hard to get even coating thickness. And so you're going to see some spots that are a little bit darker and a little bit lighter. Now, in this case, I could have actually made this a little bit more smooth by adding a little bit more black pigment, but you definitely don't want to add too much pigment because you run into the possibility of chemistry issues. Now, you can also see how the same thing is true along this stitch line here, because as we smooth this down, there's just no way to get a lot of coating thickness. Personally, I think this looks kind of cool on a black boat, but everybody has different preferences. Also, when we come to the inside of the boat, you can see that the fabric has a little bit different appearance than it does with acid dye. So with an acid dyed boat, this would be as dark as it is on the outside. With pigmented boats, it tends to be a little bit lighter. But once again, in this case, I think this actually looks kind of cool. So it's just a little bit more advanced if you're heading towards red or black as far as the application method. Also, with a dark boat, obviously you're not going to have that translucent look. And so if you like the look of the sunlight filtering through the side of a skin boat, obviously a deep red or a deep black boat isn't going to give you that. Now, with the red specifically, just like with acid dye, you do have to use a lot of the red pigment, otherwise it could potentially turn pink. And Generally speaking, with rare earth pigment, you want to use as little of it as possible because the more that you put in the coating, the harder it is to get an even color. And at some of the really high concentrations, you risk having chemistry issues. However, red is an exception to that. We really do ramp up the amount for red to make sure it doesn't turn pink. And for the black boat here, there's a couple special considerations. The first one is that straight black is not going to end up perfectly black because you are going to see a little bit of yellowing from the coating. And so personally, if I'm trying to get a really dark looking boat like this, I like to mix black and a little bit of brown into it because then as this starts to naturally yellow, that brown will start to come out a little bit more and it'll end up kind of like a rich chocolate seal skin color as opposed to just a black boat that has turned a little bit yellow. But that's just my own personal preference. If you want to do it differently, that's fine. Something that people don't think about with black boats though is that these are extremely hot in the summer sun. And if you're paddling in the Pacific Northwest, mostly in the morning, the evening, on cloudy days or in the winter, this is probably not going to be a big deal for you. And it's probably even okay for the occasional hot summer sunlight paddle. But if you're building one of these in South Florida, you are going to cook yourself alive inside of a black skin boat. So just keep that in mind because I know that black boats are really sexy and attractive and I would just hate to see someone build one of these and end up not being able to use it because it's too hot. And so something you should be aware of is that even though with the red and the black, what you see is kind of what you get, with the more natural rare earth pigments like the natural sienna, the burnt sienna, and the burnt umber, a lot of those go on kind of really light and unimpressive looking, but then as they start to get exposed to the sun, they get really dark and really beautiful. So what I'm doing right now is a ton of experiments, just trying different rare earth pigments in different combinations so I can develop a color library, not just for what those look like initially, but what color they turn after they're exposed to ultraviolet radiation. And hopefully over time, we're gonna to start to narrow in on a color recipe library that is as comprehensive as we already have for the acid dyes. And if you wanna see what some of these colors look like on finished boats, you can always surf around the website or the YouTube channel. We've got specific color pages on the website that shows all the color samples for the acid dye. We're working on that for the rare earth pigments. And also if you surf around the student builds blog as well, you're gonna see a lot of different color examples. I just added really detailed instructions for the rare earth pigment process to both of the skin on frame building courses the same way that we already have for the acid dye. That way, if you wanna go with rare earth pigment as opposed to acid dye, you're pretty much guaranteed to have predictable results as long as you follow the instructions. 
And I think that's a good final point to finish on right here. And that is, regardless of which coloring system you're using, if you apply these incorrectly, you can have some seriously less than satisfactory results. And just to give you an idea of a couple of the things that I've seen happen, if you put the acid dye on too heavily, it will inhibit the adhesion of the coating. And even though your coating might stick and look beautiful initially, within a couple weeks, you can start to see serious delamination issues. And in extreme cases, the boat can actually start to leak. And at that point, that's pretty much a guaranteed reskin. So definitely something you want to avoid. With the rare earth pigment, I've seen people using random pigments from art supply stores. And sometimes that works out fine. Other times the pigment turns out to not be compatible with the polyurethane or the color just ends up really splotchy and really streaky. So just keep in mind that if you're gonna go outside of our rare earth pigment recommended suppliers, you are taking a risk that it may not turn out the way you want it to. And that's really the whole reason that we do what we do here at Cape Falcon Kayak, because regardless of whether it's the steam bending process or the skinning process or the coating process or the coloring process, the whole idea of what I do here is to experiment with all these different skin on frame technologies. That way I can pass that knowledge on. So if you're interested in building a skin boat without having to do a bunch of iterations and make a bunch of mistakes, you can go through the whole process from start to finish and end up with the result that you're looking for. All right, so that's it for now. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You can also find me on my website, capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got a bunch more skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can also find us on Instagram, at Cape Falcon Builds, where I post a daily build blog of everything I'm working on here in the shop. And just like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check out the Instagram because there is so much cool skin on frame related content there than ever shows up on my YouTube channel and sometimes not even in my paid courses. Okay, that's it for now. Take care, be safe on the water, and have fun building your skin boat.